Now let's talk about the importance of the tilt of the pelvis. And Napoleon is here to help me to demonstrate some of this with you. The tilt of the pelvis is the most important or most powerful adjustment we can make in most poses, particularly forward bends and back bends. And so when we look at Napoleon's tilt of his pelvis, when he is in a forward bend, if we're doing the straight spine, what is often considered the correct form to do a back bend in, then he has basically has not moved his pelvis. He has come forward in a way where his pelvis stays in exactly the same orientation to his spine. His spine doesn't bend. This creates the most possible stretch. I'm going to get these arms out of the way here. This creates the most possible stretch in the hamstrings. This really lengthens the hamstrings. When we often hear this instruction of um, pull your sitting bones back or even to use your hands to draw the flesh of your sitting bones back, that's to get the sitting bones farther back, to maximize the leg stretch. And what this also does is minimize the spine stretch. In, uh, because there's so much continuous fascia, we may still feel a back stretch when we come into this because it's not like there's the legs, the leg myofascial group ends and then the back begins. They all, as we've seen in our images, it's, it's a continuous web through the body. So there might still be some back sensation, but it's pretty much minimized when we don't allow the pelvis to tilt. So in yin yoga, we are presenting or representing the idea that modern yoga has erased <laughs> that the that rounding the spine might not be such a terrible thing to do when we're doing that we're allowing the pelvis to tilt so the orientation of the pelvis was this before anterior tilt we're allowing it to posteriorly tilt which causes more space to happen between the vertebrae in the back and that causes the spine to stretch as we come into a forward bend here or as napoleon comes into a forward bend here when his spine is rounded he has less stretch on his hamstrings and more in his back which might feel wonderful especially if he's got some tension and most people have some tension if not loads and loads of it in their thoracolumbar region that whole vast network back here um, and so the the sacrum the si joint can get a nice stretch back here and it can also be too much and that's sort of what a lot of conventional exercise therapy and yoga is going by is that you should just never round your spine you know and, and it's even come into modern like how are you supposed to pick something up in the world you're supposed to bend your knees and never bend your spine in various directions we simply don't subscribe to that in yin yoga we believe that stressing the spine stressing the body in all of its natural ranges of motion is healthy and of course we can overdo anything and so we don't want to jam into a bent spine while we're holding 50 pounds or something like that and we don't want to do it over and over again in an aggressive way but we can do it in controlled way in the appropriate amounts to get um, good stress on the spine and always checking in to see if it's painful if there's any sharp pains in the discs or anything then we definitely want to listen to the body and back off um, so when we do the more conventional anteriorly tilted pelvis and maximize this stretch we get into what um, a number of yoga injuries, common yoga injuries of the sacro tuberous ligament gets overstretched from the sitting bone to, um, I mean, from, yeah, from, from the sacrum to the sitting bone gets overstretched here. And then the attachment of the hamstrings is a very common yoga injury that I myself have had more than once and it takes a long time to heal. Another place injury can happen here is 
uh, impingement of the femur against the acetabulum. It's a syndrome called FAI, or femoral acetabular impingement. And it is when the, the cartilage here, or something about the hip socket, gets degrades so much in the inside of the hip socket to the point, in the inside front of the hip socket, to the point where it becomes painful to go all the way down, where, it be, where you can feel your bones hitting one another. A lot of long-time yoga teachers, especially yoga teachers of more vigorous and rigid styles that insist on this sitting bones back, flat spine kind of thing, um, report that kind of pain. And it, when that happens, what, what feels best for these teachers who, or anyone who has it, that they might want to have they're, they actually feel unsafe in a forward bend, and yin can feel unsafe for them, and they get very protective. But one of the things they can do is put a bolster here, and it actually encourages a rounding. It almost does what people who have natural compression, like me, we, we just can't bend more than this. We're always rounded. The bolster creates that so that you get a, a rounded spine without jamming into that hip socket. Now let's look at back bends and how the tilt of the pelvis affects back bends. When we come into a back bended pose, it's really the same concept that when the pelvis is tilted with the spine, we have the most leg stretch. And when the pelvis is away from the spine, when it's going more forward, we get more compression in the spine. We get more sensation here, more stretch here. So now, if we want to restrict the pelvis the most and get more back sensation, we do legs together. I'm showing you a sphinx, but this goes for any back bend. And when we want to make space, we open the legs wider. Or, in the case of a forward bend, for half butterfly pose, we can allow the, you know, we can do it with one leg and that allows some movement. That allows the pelvis to not be so locked. And in that way, we don't have quite so much of the, um, of the pelvis being stuck in a certain tilt. So that is the basics of the tilt of the pelvis and how it's always one or the other or something in between, but none of them is the right choice or the wrong choice. It's just a powerful adjustment, whichever choice you make. Thank you for watching.